And now we are re. I, this is a this is a talk about a blast from the past. Somebody uh, I go way back with uh, Reese Waters, comedian, host, DC's finest. Uh, one of my uh, former colleagues at ESPN. We had some great times. If you are not following Reese Waters on Instagram, you are missing out. In fact, and I'm not just saying this, bro. Like, if, if there is nothing, if you want news, sports, culture, internet randomness. You need to be following uh, WUSA 9's Reese Waters. Uh, and you also have the District uh, Champions podcast that you do as well, That's man. Right. I love what you're doing. I just want to tell you, you are doing fantastic stuff on the ground, man. Seriously, you, you, amazing you, content you're putting out there. I appreciate that. You were definitely a mentor of mine uh, when when we were over at ESPN. I'm the extra that was in all of the really cool stuff that you did. I'm the guy that nobody <laughs> knows. Okay, I know Michael. I know Jamel. That's Sarah. So I don't know who that. That's Carrie Champion. There goes that dude again. Who was in the other thing? I don't. Nobody knows. So who you, were Rick, you were Ricky you and Boys in the Hood. You were Ricky and Boys in the Hood. Who were you? you was, who yes. were you coming to America? You were. Um, I was. Which um, ah. You you I you were one of the cats. I was one of the yeah. yeah you, I was I was I yeah. think I was getting my haircut. I think it was one of the cats to get my haircut. But yes, you were Cuba Gooden Jr. I think. There you go. Oh, there it yeah. is. Uh, yeah. Oh, look. Yeah. 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 That's a great role. That's a great role to yeah. have. No. Yeah. No. Always crush it. Always crush it. It's good to have you, man. It really is. Uh, definitely want to get Absolutely. into some DC sports with you, some current events with you. But you uh you were listening to the conversation uh, that we were having about the coaching hiring cycle in the NFL a minute ago, and I definitely wanted to get your thoughts if you want to weigh in on that. Yeah, well, it made me think because one of the one of the ways in which I very uh, fortunately have been able to carve out a, a niche in in this sports uh, media landscape is kind of that perspective of of a fan, and I'm thinking about the mental gymnastics that a black fan has to do right now. I mean, just look at the the Super Bowl with the Super Bowl coming up. First of all, I got Hotep friends that ain't watched football uh, ever since Colin Kaepernick has been out the league. Okay, so I got that contingent. Then I got uh, me one as a guy who's advocating for the black coaches, seeing what's happened to Eric Bieniemy, him not getting a job. So I have to accept that. Then I see a dude uh, in Detroit. Uh, who's talking about biting people's kneecaps. I got to be okay with that. I got to be okay with that. <laughs> in Philadelphia, not being able to put a, a, a coherent sentence in. I got to be able to deal with that. I got to deal with Matt Stafford getting his freedom papers, even though Calvin Johnson and Barry Sanders never could. I got to deal with that. I got to deal with all of this. All of the mental gymnastics I have to deal with as a black fan just trying to watch the Super Bowl. It's hard, man. It's tough out here for us. It reminds me of the national championship game because in watching a national championship game, I was sitting there rooting for Alabama because of what Dabo Sweeney had said about black people should be satisfied uh, because we had a black president and therefore disproving the idea of systemic racism. Just think about that. On racial, <laughs> for racial reasons, I was rooting for the state of Alabama. That's where we at right now. <laughs> Left you no choice in the matter. I mean, come on. Well, hey, 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 look, hey, look, Reese. At least you recognize it. You recognize the irony. I mean, you got. I'm sure you got a good bit out of it. You know. That's true. That is true. That is, that is a very good. That is a very good point. And it's funny because immediately after, uh, immediately after uh, Clemson lost, I posted something on Twitter and I said, you know, uh, Dabo Sweeney ranked the team that ended his season. Uh, you know, out of the top 10, which is his worst take since blaming Florida State uh, for their player, Clemson's player, having COVID and canceling the game, which is his worst take since saying black people should be happy because, you know, we had a black president. <laughs> right. you know, racism. But like the outpouring of support and the outpouring of dragging for Dabo Sweeney just told me that you had all these people watching the game that way, just not saying nothing. Because they knew, yeah. you know, you knew, you you never know how it's going to be perceived. You never know how people are going to paint it. But you have all people watching a, a football game with all this like racial, social angst all built up into the game. Man, it's wild. No, no listen. Doubt. Uh, speaking, well, go I was going to say, speaking of that though, uh, Michael said you're a longtime DC sports team, a uh, sports fan. Your football really? team, your football team is the football team. So uh, yeah. how did you process that? I know a lot of people, uh, you know, they're rooting for them. There are songs written uh, with that with that old name involved. 
Uh, how about you? Did, was it strange for you to root for a team that did make the playoffs, but uh, for the first time making the playoffs as the Washington football team? It was less strange this year than many years. And be, and for, for the reason, Michael, because of the space that I try and occupy um, is one that's not completely foreign from where you guys are, right? Like, I, I follow sports, but I also try and have, um, you know, so try and advocate for social equity in sports and outside of sports. Well, how in the world are you going to do that? When you got that name on the chest of a jersey or you're advocating on behalf of the owner who's supporting that or you put money in his pocket, how are you going to do that? You can't do that. So this year was actually one of the easiest years I've had in quite some time because I don't have to deal with um, the, the criticism that literally just comes part and parcel with being from this place and a fan of the team's uh, that play here, which does, which is by no means an endorsement of the owner. It's not an endorsement of the administration or the GM or nobody. It's it's an endorsement of my mama who decided she wanted to <laughs> stay in PG County, which meant that I would grow up a fan of this team. That's all it is. So on the field, uh, I saw you tweet this the other day. Uh, I don't know what corner of, of, of Washington football team Twitter it, listen, everybody, most teams would be happy to land Deshaun Watson and he would be an upgrade, represent an upgrade for most teams at quarterback, but not at the expense of Chase Young. Like, I, I mean, listen, I, look, and I'm sitting there saying there's no price that's too high, but I don't know if I'm not trying to throw Chase Young in there. It's, and, and neither are you, um, especially Taylor Heineke, man. I, th I think y'all might have gotten a little, I might have found something with this kid from what I saw in the playoffs. So, how would you fix the football team's quarterback situation? Michael, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna go all. I'm gonna go all the way. I'm gonna go all the way back. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way back to RG three. Okay, because this is because this is a weird. This is a very weird fan base, and we're very disjointed in a lot of ways. But I'm gonna go back to RG three. Okay, RG three decided that after he got hurt, he was going to be all in for week one. He came, uh, you know, for the year after his rookie year, his second season, he decided he was going to, in many people's eyes, rush his his rehab. Uh, and he came back and, you know, clearly a little bit too early. But the way that that was painted by Mike Shanahan and, and his uh, administration rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And looking at how he handled RG3 vis-a-vis, say, a Kirk Cousins. Then when you have a new regime comes in, uh, that is the Jay Gruden regime, and clearly Jay Gruden was a guy that advocated for Kirk Cousins really at, at, at in, in every way that he possibly could. And you know what? Kirk Cousins was a good, competent quarterback during the time he was here. It's not a really about what he did on the field. It's about how you received, how he was talking about Kirk Cousins rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. I can tell you this. I know a lot of fans of this team that wanted Jay Gruden fired the day that they began to start Kirk Cousins. That's a lot of, of Washington football fans. They just tolerated him for years because they didn't like what they heard as a double standard between how he spoke about RG3 and how he spoke about Kirk Cousins. You fast forward to Dwayne Haskins, okay? Dwayne Haskins uh, clearly is, is somebody who... Um, was not ready to be an NFL quarterback, okay? I can say that. That said, mm -hmm. you have a guy who's brought, uh, who's drafted by a, uh, drafted into a, a head coach that doesn't want him, who is in a lame duck year, uh, who at that point was was doing things that people said, well, he's trying to get himself fired. I don't know if, if you remember the, the the circus that was Jay Gruden's last year where people like he's trying to get himself fired. That was Wayne Haskins' mm -hmm. rookie year. You want me to tell me what he learned in that? You want me to tell me that was that was <laughs> a year? I mean, they're lucky if that's even a mulligan year, if that's not even a year that put him back. So he gets fired. They bring in Ron Rivera, um, who's so in on Dwayne Haskins that he brings in Kyle Allen, who was the quarterback that he had that got him let go when he was in Carolina. That's how right. in on Dwayne Haskins he was, okay? So look, Dwayne Haskins in the offseason, I'm like, we got perfect situation. This is perfect, Michael Mike. This is perfect. I'm like, look, it don't matter how garbage we are, it's two studs in college. 
you put Dwayne Haskins out there, let him throw the ball to the beer vendor if he wants to. It don't matter. This man got 16 games of runway. Just let him do what he got to do. We all agreed as a fan base, okay? We all agreed it was a conference call. We were there. We all agreed. 16 <laughs> games. Four yeah. games in, my man gets the hook. So I'm like, okay. You you see, you see, so this this is this is this is a fan base that these kinds of things are not foreign to us, and we see these kinds of things happen and they make people feel a certain kind of way. Chase Young got drafted four games into Chase Young's rookie year because he doesn't look like Joey Bosa or he doesn't look like Nick Bosa. Uh, all of a sudden, we should have drafted Justin Herbert which you throw that on top of all the Dwayne Haskins stuff I was giving you. So right, right. It, I'm telling you, and, and, and when people say, and when people say, uh, to go back to your last question, how, what it's like rooting for a team like that. And you got to understand this fan base, you have a very diverse fan base in DC in Prince George's County. You also have a less diverse fan base out in Virginia uh, out in West Virginia, out in deeper into Maryland, into some place. like it's a it's a, like this fan base is is wild, and so you have a lot of people that think, uh, uh, you know, you'd be surprised. I put it that way. But hey, who's gonna win this game? Who's gonna win the Super Bowl? <sighs> That's a good question. Look, I I don't see any way that the universe is gonna give me the uh, Patrick Mahomes, the ending to the Patrick Mahomes story that I wanted, or rather should I say the ending to the Tom Brady story that he deserves. I don't feel like the universe is going to give me that many good things. That's what I want. And I just am satisfied that I'm not going to get what I want. Um, I don't see, I've rooted for Tampa Bay. I had a rooting interest in Tampa Bay. I took the over before the season started. And I even took them at 18 to one before the playoffs started. So I, like oh, now I have you're a talking Michael's interest. language. There you go. <laughs> Team now one, you talking, man. Oh, you speak. You speaking, to Michael? That, that's all you, dog. I like, look. Yeah. <laughs> but I, look, I've been nervous. I've been nervous with Tampa Bay this whole season, um, especially with their defense. Their names, I think, um, they don't play up to the names on the back of the jersey. At least uh, the reputation that the name on the back of the jersey suggests. A lot of times, that concerns me. Uh, and a lot of times they take their offense sometimes to get started. And I know Kansas City has been guilty of that as well, but nobody has, has shown the ability to be as explosive as Kansas City. So I got to go. With no, the that Chiefs. makes sense. You know, hey, yeah. we got to go in a minute, but I cannot. We talked about the fire throwback hoodie you got on. Yesterday, I was pounding the table trying to free Bradley Beal <laughs> uh, after he was talking about he's frustrated at the perception. And how he's being nitpicked when other guys get criticized more like like do as a as a as a Wizards fan, I, I, I hope I don't offend you by trying to extract this man from this situation, but you even gotta know objectively that he deserves better. I mean that's not that's not that's not a controversial thing to say, is it? You know, you gotta know when you're toxic. That's a lot of people walking around here from toxic relationship to toxic relationship and don't do no work on themselves. That's why, Michael, when, when Kevin Durant was a free agent and a lot of people were like, oh, come to D.C., I was like, don't you come mm -hmm. to D.C. You know why? Because I care about you. I want better for you. We need yeah, to work on ourselves before we enter thank into you. another relationship. So, okay, good. You, you pick it up what I put down. Hey, man, yeah. can we make this the first? It's been too long since you and I kicked it. Uh, again, I look back on our, our time together. We had a lot of fun. And uh, let's let's do this again soon, all right? It was dope, man. I loved it. I appreciate you. And congratulations, man. I've been really enjoying all the stuff you guys have been putting out. It's really it's really something. Thanks, man. Same here. Thank you, Reece. Follow Reese Waters appreciate on the gram, man. Nobody, nobody's doing it like this, brother, for real. You're doing some amazing stuff. I, it's like, I don't need the news. I just watch, I just watch you. Got Reese. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.